Hi. This is the first one in a series of three stamping soiree evenings that we're presenting. So please go and grab yourself a glass of bubbly and join us as we travel to Venice and explore the beauty of the Venetian mask. Now our Venetian mask stamps were inspired by a trip that Matthew and I did back in 2000 to visit my sister in Europe and we traveled down to see Venice and loved watching the artisans in the little back streets working on making these masks. I was just enchanted by them. So I came back and decided that that was something that I wanted to try and create in paper craft. Matthew's just going to zoom around because I've suddenly changed direction in what I was talking about. So this is what something, a card that I made. I hand carved the Venetian mask shape and then created a card that I entered in the Melbourne Paper Arts competition back in 2002 and won the People's Choice for the open card front, which was a great honour. Um, but it just cemented the fact that I just adore these Venetian masks. So we then, once we started Eclectic, I redid from the hand carved face, then refined it and made it a little bit neater as our basic face shape and then started creating accessories to go with it. The actual mask accessories set, plus some solid mask bits. And then since then, we've also created the detail images to go with those. There's more in the series as well that we'll explore over the next couple of videos, but let's get stuck into just the basic ones. The Venetian mask series is something that, when you look at the packets, they're a little bit confusing. So it's actually really good to see them done in a video so that you can actually see how all the, all the bits work and stamp together. And it does get confusing as well because we have to create paper masks to use with our Venetian masks to do masking. So let's, <laughs> let's sort out all the terminology and off we go. So I've already got my mask loaded into, or looking at it, my paper is loaded into my precision press. And I'm having a look at where I want to stamp the mask and where our decorative mask element is going to go. So I can see where that's going to fit on the card. I can take this little bit out, just center that again, and pick it up with our press. And then I'm just going to stamp it softly. Actually, in the color that we're going to do the background part, I'll come back in and stamp it stronger over the top of the chalk ink later. I just want this basically as a guide at the moment. So I don't even care if I haven't inked the whole image. Just let my stamp press close, press it down, and then lift up. So that's just a bit of a guide for me to then add in the rest of the imagery that we're going to do. Now, rather than taking that out of the press, uh, no, I'm going to need to take it out of the press because I want to put the face in there. So I'll clean that, lift it out. I'll leave the basic, what I call the bat wing mask, just on an acrylic block. So this one we're going to ink up thoroughly with this sea breeze chalk ink. Now you can use other inks, chalk inks or dye inks, uh, pigment inks on these masks and you can do, because it's a solid stamp, you can do different effects which will explore some of that. But you can just stamp it straight as a colour. So I'm just positioning it within the, within the fluffy outline there. I'm just positioning it inside that. Make sure I'm fairly even and press down. Being a pigment ink, giving it just a few minutes to absorb into the cotton blend card. And then lift up. So we've given our mask some background colour now. So now we can look at where our face is going to sit. And I can still see where I stamped this part, I can still see where these eye holes are to make sure that I position the eyes of the mask within those. Excellent. So now we pick that up with a press and we're actually going to ink this in two stages. So I'll use the malted mauve first without the little bit of protective plastic in there. Ink up. And this will give me a soft outline for the face, but I also need to cover this up. This is where the masking and the masking comes in. I need to cover this up with a mask so that we don't end up with the lines of our face going through that bit of image there. So we cover that up. Come in with our face. Press down. Check that we're happy with our image, and I am. 
So this time I will clean that off and this time I'm just going to ink what is actually the eye holes of the mask. I'm just going to ink those with the Nocturne Black. You could also do it with a black marker, which I find is a little bit easier, but it doesn't always give as good a black. So sometimes just using the corner of your ink pad will actually give you a better black, but I will have to be careful that I don't ink any bits that I don't want inked. So I'm just dabbing that corner of the ink pad there. And now I'll come in with my cleaning sponge and just clean off the top of the nose where I can see I've got a little bit of black there. And then we're ready to stamp those eyes. So let you press it, press down. The advantage of doing this in the stamp press is, means that if the black isn't black enough, I can always ink them up and stamp them again, which I'm going to do because I'm not 100% happy with that. So I'll just make sure that my card is still sitting placed in the stamp press where I wanted it to be, where I put it. And let's make sure I ink that up. It's the outside of that one and the inside of this one in particular. So I'm just making sure that I really get those bits. Now, I do like using something for this particular job. I'd like using something like the Versafine Clear Nocturne because you can see I'm getting ink on the backing part of the stamp there. But I know with the Nocturne that it's going to clean off the stamp. So I'm not staining that backing area. Some other inks like the Catherine Poole, which is a fantastic black, but it would stain the backing area as would an archival ink or a stays on ink. So by using the Nocturne, I can then clean my stamp and I'm getting very little marking on that backing area of the stamp. Because you want to keep that area as clear as you can because you want to be able to see where you're placing your stamp. Okay, so let's just give that a quick dry and then we're going to, actually no, I'm just going to stamp this in Nocturne. So we don't even need to dry it. I will just pop my magnets back on again, position this over where I can see my little bit of a guide from the previous inking. Pick it up. Pick up with the Nocturne. Just making sure I've got to all the edges of the design there. Press down. How fabulous is that? It's just beautiful. And then of course we add some glitter. The other thing that I do like to do as well is adding some colour into the, fa the face part of the mask. So we'll just do that. Let me give everything a quick wipe. Pop that to one side to use again in a moment. Okay, so to do the colouring I need a mask of the mask. So this is where I've stamped on the scrap paper, just on a bit of computer paper. And then I've carefully cut it out with a knife so that I've got both bits of the mask. This way I can use the reverse mask for colouring in there, or if I wanted to colour around or do patterns or anything around the face, I can cover up the mask that way. But for this one, we're going to use this. Well, you, you can use a number 10 or a number 8 brush. You could also use your blending brushes, but I find the long-handled future brushes a little bit easier for this. Pick up a little bit on your brush, start off on your scrap and just circle in gently. You really don't need a lot of colour. It'll feel like you're not doing much at all, but when you have a look, there's just that little shading there that makes all the difference. So bring a little bit in on the cheeks. Don't normally do down to the chin, but you could if you wanted to. Now this could be done before we've done this stamping or after, that's totally up to you. Then we could just come in with some glitter. And we've done turquoise, so let's we could use some pearls, we could use glitter. You could certainly add decorative elements around the outside of that part of the mask. So I'm using what am I using here? I've got sea glass and I've got Robin's egg for the 
pearls. Let me just grab a little bit of scrap paper so I can just get these stickles flowing. Making sure it's there, beautiful. So we can do a little bit on the lips there. I always need a little bit of glitter. And then I could add some in around the mask. Let's actually dress up this fluffy bit with some glitter. But I don't want to do a solid line because I don't want to take away the look of the lacy look to it. So just putting some dots in there. And then with some pearls. Let's just do some pearls around the inside of the lace. I mean, you can actually do whatever you like. <laughs> you, know, you can just keep playing and playing with these. The other little thing that we could add in, and this looks particularly nice just done in the same soft ink that we've done the, the blush and the basic stamping, and that's a few of our little swirls from the mask accessory set. I'm just going to grab. And if you don't use all the mask bits if you just do the face that's where using lots of the little accessory swirls can look great I'm just going to have a look at how it's going to fit you can do it on one side or both sides and I probably should have done this before I did all the pearls of course because now I'm going to have to be very careful I don't smudge things is an extra little one there that I think will fit very neatly just up in there. And of course it can be different each side, you don't have to do the same each side. Or on the other side we might do uh, one up on the above the, the mask area. You might have noticed me recently using some of these with some of our ladies, but they were originally designed around these masks, but I'm finding I'm using them for lots of other things as well. Of course, if you do uh, what I'm doing here and do it different bottom to top, you haven't got to worry about getting it all symmetrical. Cheating, really. There we go. Oh, missed a bit on the end. There we go. Okay. Now to finish that off, I would probably shade around the edge of the card and add a little bit of a swirly pattern. But let's move on to our next card so that we can get the two of them done. But how pretty is that? Okay, so our next one, we're going to move on to using this set, which is a little bit uh, more complex. It's a bit bigger. Grab my stamp press, turn that that way so I don't get any bits of liquid pearls stuck on everything. Stamp press, new bit of card, we have our cotton blend cardstock, position it, lining it up with our marks there. And now I'm going to look again at how this, see this is quite tall, so I've got to make sure if I'm stamped the face too tall, that wouldn't fit in. So I've got to make sure that it's all going to fit together nicely. So we could actually bring it down a little bit that way. So let's stamp that in first. And again, I'm just going to do this one softly because I'm actually going to come in and emboss this one. So let's just pop it in softly as a guide. Clean. 
Now, to stamp the colour for this one, oh, let, let's pop our face in first. So position that, check that the nose is lining up with this part here and that the eyes fit in neatly in the gap there that there is for them. Beautiful. And because we don't want the lines of the face all around there, we again cover this up with a mask. A mask, mask. mask mask, yes. So placing this in. Ink up our base mask, base face. And I'm just using the malted mauve ink again. I'm not going to worry too much about it going through the feathers there because I'll be embossing those so they'll, they will stand out. Lift that out of the way. And I'm going to add some pattern to this one. Just to show what can be done. So with our solid mask for that, which will fit In there. Just making sure that we're fitting into place. And now I might just notice there my paper moved, so I'm going to check that I'm still lined up in the same place and still pushed up nice and firmly to that edge. So now with our mask here, we can I've got the mosaic tiles pattern. So I'm going to actually ink up in quite a dark ink. Make sure I've got the whole stamp inked really thoroughly. Sometimes with the chalk inks, it's nice to actually ink quite lightly with them. But other times when you're doing effects, you actually want to get really good coverage. Then with the mosaic tiles, we can just place that on Slight twist, and again, a slight twist. Just lifting a little bit of pattern off there. And as we stamp that down, it'll be amazing. So we get this pattern coming into the background, and that's before we even start adding other decorative bits. And then I'm going to use the same pattern as my background stamp. Now we'll just clean this mask off. We do need to add the eyes in there still, the eye holes. So we'll come back with our actual face. Line it up in there. Now I can line it up by just lining up the edge of the face and the lips will give me my positioning correct. This is where something like this stamp press tool is so good. Because <laughs> it just means you can line things up and then know that it's just going to stamp in exactly the right place for you. So let's ink up our eyes. Check the nose. I look good this time. Press down. Make sure it sits there for a moment. Let that pigment ink absorb so we get a nice black. And now I'm going to give that a dry before I do anything more. Because the next stage is embossing and we're using pigment inks which take a few minutes to dry. So I do not want my embossing powder sticking to all that background area and background colour. So we dry that off. We've got our decorative mask here, which I have had sitting in the liquid pearls on the other card. <laughs> Give it a quick wash. Oh, you poor stamps. I'm throwing them all over the table here. Okay, let's place our card back into our press and just get a little bit of organising done. So I'm just going to move some inks 
out of the way so that I can get our princess gold embossing powder and our catching paper all laid out ready. I've got my little brush here handy and I'll just grab my Versamark ink and we have to place this where we've already stamped our guideline. So I'm just checking I've got it in the right place on those lower curls. Okay. And of course, if you don't line something up exactly, you put some glitter over it. <laughs> this Venetian mask is so forgiving because you can just add more and more glitter. So you don't stress if you don't think you've placed something exact. Let's just wipe over that with our anesthetic pad and I moved it so I'm just going to line it back up with my grid mark that I've already checked that that's where my lining up is. Now, let's ink up with our Versamark, nice and thoroughly. Press down, make sure we get right to the top of those feathers. And down to the last swirls. Get it lift up. Pop it in our embossing powder. And cross your fingers that it doesn't stick to everything. Oh, we're looking pretty good. Just checking any extra bits. No, that looks pretty good. Okay. Yeah, don't stick it down the liquid in the wet pearls. Give that one a clean. Press to one side and do some heating. Oh, might just put the embossing powder away first. And of course, gold embossing powder always looks so good on the masks because they actually use a lot of gold in their painting of them. Now I can see I have actually got a little bit of gold powder over the before I start doing the heating, the gold has stuck to where we've done the black of the eyes. So let's just get our little brush and just clean that off before we heat things up. The other thing you could do if you had stamped the black of the eye holes and you weren't happy with how black it was, like if you'd done it with a marker or something, it wasn't exact, you can always come in and just go over them by hand. As long as you've got that basic shape there, we can always add some extra black to it if we needed to. So as I said, although they look complicated, they're actually quite forgiving. Let's get some heating in there. Clean everything up. Gold embossing powder is so good, isn't it? Now this one's this one is so decorative. We don't need any of the little extra elements, but I think I'll still add a little bit of colour there. Let's pop this one over the top. Malted mauve ink again. This is a ver this one and pink petunia are really versatile colours for working with both the Venetian masks and the ladies stamps. A bit of colour in there, just a bit over the cheeks. And we want to stamp with that eggplant ink 
and the mosaic tiles pattern. So I'm just going to lift up a little bit of scrap paper for this because I want to stamp off the edge of the card. There is a text part of this, so I'm just going to make sure I get that up so it's stamping up the right way, not upside down. I think when I did that basic stamping there, I don't think I actually had enough ink on the stamp because it didn't lift off quite as with quite as, as much pattern as I normally get. Because this stamp has got so much detail to it, we just missed a bit of that. I mean, you can still see the the motley effect of it, but we missed a little bit of the patterning there. Okay, let's just do a little bit of shading. I'll just grab a darker brush. Oh, purple one. Shading around the card. And although they're quite big stamps, you've still got plenty of room for fitting a greeting in there or a bit of a verse or something. So looking at what colour we might add into those feathers. So let's pick up some of our unique colour brush markers. I'll we'll pick up a purple. Maybe a little bit of let's tuck a bit of blue in, light blue in there as well. Just thinking what colour do we normally sort of see in, in peacock feathers. And of course the trusty water brush just to soften that all out, to blend colours in together. And we can also, if there's any on the embossing pad that we want to clear off, we can just dab that off so that we can see all that beautiful gold embossing. I couldn't help myself, could I? I wasn't going to watercolour on this card, and then I have. Of course, you could just colour with the marker and just colour fluffy bits and not add any water to it. I could. But I've already started with the water now, so I won't. I'll, I'll add water in, you know, because I have. You've got like 10 seconds to go. Oh, awesome. Heaps of time. I'll just add a little bit less water in this time. So again, it's one of those things you can play around with as much as you like, because you can do, you can watercolor that whole background area or you can add in the solid stamp like we did here. You can ink up the solid stamp with multiple ink colours. You can stamp patterns into it. Just, just whatever your imagination, wherever the flights of fancy go to, these stamps, you, you can't do too much. Venetian masks are just so beautiful and they've always got heaps of gold and heaps of glitter and stuff. So you really can't, can't go, you can't go too much. You just, you just keep adding and playing and they're going to be beautiful. You know, we could even, even with the, because those chalks dry waterproof, we could even add 
extra little bits of shading around the edge of the mask if we wanted to. We could add glitter and pearls like we did with the last one. <laughs> what a pity you're out of time. What a pity I'm out of time because I just want to keep playing. So I do hope that you have a go with these and enjoy playing with them. That's it. Kick back with your bubbly, have a bit of a play. Let's have a look at our cards that we've done. So that's just showing the two basic mask shapes. And in the next couple of tutorials, we'll explore some more looks that we can get with our Venetian mask. Thank you for being with me tonight and we'll see you again soon.